So I've got Hoss joining me. How are you going? I'm very good, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm going great. Thanks so much for chatting. My pleasure. So tell me about your history with the band. How did you get to becoming the guitarist of Carnival? <laughs> uh, that feels like a lifetime ago, I think. Um, basically, <laughs> I, I used to tour manage, uh, or still do tour manage, a bunch of different um, Aussie and international bands, and I brought one across to Perth. Uh, I've known the guys for a very long time, so um, every time we came across, we always got together and, and said hello. And we uh, uh, were drinking somewhere it's in a hotel room or something, <laughs> something ridiculous. And then yeah. uh, they were sort of talking about John was talking about the fact that they were looking for a, another guitarist because they were sort of this was I don't know they'd sort of started writing Tomato but hadn't sort of got too deeply into it at that point. And so I said, oh yeah, I'll do it, no worries. And then uh, woke up with a hangover and flew home and. Uh, and he called me and said, were you serious last night about doing it? And so I went, uh, to be honest, not really, but uh, the more I think about it, it's not such a bad idea. So uh, basically within the next sort of couple of months after that, I sort of packed up shop in Melbourne and moved everything across to Perth and uh, lived out of Drew, the other guitarist's uh, parents' granny flat for uh, about four months while we continued to write the martyr. Uh Living the good life. Living the good life, that's right. Yeah, yeah, nothing, nothing's changed there. Uh, but, yeah, so basically it had no intention of staying in Perth, but I've been in Perth ever since. So uh, it's been uh, it's been quite the journey. So you mentioned you were doing tour managing. Had you been in a band before Carnival, or was this just, like, all new to you? I've been in bands, um, Melbourne bands, nothing that, you know, I've done lots of live shows, and I've done session work with other people as well and had a few other projects going at that point in time, but... Um, nothing sort of on the level that Carnival was on, so it was definitely a step up for me at the time. Uh, mm. Although in saying that, these were all these guys were pretty garage musicians back then as well. So um, you know, we sort of all hit it at the same level, I think, and then um, you know, progressed from there. But um, yeah, I don't know. You know, when you sort of you, you hear something and you feel like you know you could really be a part of that, and that's what it felt like back then when I used to listen to some of their demos or, or see them play live. Back in the early day, it was like, yeah, this is this is something I need to be a part of. So um, that was sort of how it started. <laughs> no getting out now. So let's go back a couple of years. Um, mm -hmm. I believe as a kid you weren't the biggest fan of guitar. Uh, no, no, not really. I, well, I, I started off liking it and then had a few lessons and hated it, as you do when you have lessons. Um, and then I just remember my, my brother always saying, to me, like, I can't believe you're not playing guitar like 24 hours a day. And I was like, oh, nah, no, nah, I didn't really like it. And it wasn't until a bit later on, sort of about 10 or 11 or 12, when I sort of picked it up again. And, um, you know, when you, when you discover something for yourself, it's so much better than someone else sort of handing you something and saying, mm. here, do this. Um, and that's the thing. That's when the love affair started. But um, yeah, in the early days, it was it was all about other instruments, um, drums and piano and all, all other kinds of jazz. Guitar was sort of a, an off thought at that point in time. But I mean, I think Carnival's the band benefits a bit from that. For, for most of us, I mean, Drew is definitely a drummer before he's a guitarist. Mm. Um, John's probably the best guitarist out of the three of us, and he <laughs> plays bass. So it's um, you know, it's a strange sort of convoluted thing, and we. We're just that kind of band where all of us, I mean, Steve's a good guitarist as well. He's a piano player. He can even sing. The guy's multi-talented. So I think, you know, it's we've all sort of just chosen instruments as a medium to get ideas out. I think that's kind of helps what this band is about. So after guitar, you know, grew on you and you thought maybe it's not so bad being a guitarist, what have you worked out you love so much about the six strings? Uh, it's it's very easy to get ideas out. Uh, I think maybe that just comes with the progress of an instrument. I'm sure a pianist would say the piano is the best thing to get ideas out. But no, um, guitar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's definitely something very attractive about the guitar. I like acoustic. I love acoustic guitar and even like nylon string guitar. I love it. It's yeah. just such an easy easy sound on the ears, and you can just sit back and just get ideas out really quickly and. Uh, you know, I, I, I enjoy the, the fluidity of it, and, the, and there's some amazing players out there um, that just, you know, are very easy to inspire and very easy to push on. And there is something about the guitar that's very attractive, um, the balance between the the electrics and the wood and the strings and all that all that jazz. So it's, um, yeah, it was definitely been a love affair since then. I've uh, I've become very very attached to my guitars. <laughs> Good. So, um, like you mentioned, like you, there's lots of guitarists out there that inspire you. The ones that do, are they um, metal guitarists or are they more, you know, no. style, acoustic? 
Definitely more finger style acoustic. That's the thing oh, about really? Carnival too. But we, we play such heavy music. But yeah, I mean, John's probably the biggest heavy fan of us, uh, and Drew would next to him. Besides those two, the rest of us aren't really that big of metalheads. I mean, I, I, you know, Meshuggah is probably one of my top ten favorite bands. More to do with the the nature of what they write more than the fact mm. that they're a heavy band. I think. I mean, I appreciate heavy music, but I mean, yeah, blues guitarists are some of my favorites, some classical guitarists, you know, the Django Reinhardt, all the people who sort of do it outside the box and do it a bit differently. They're the ones that really attract me. I think. So you will go. We'll go back to when you were younger. Back on track. Um, <laughs> your parents <laughs> owned music. Your parents owned the music store. Um, yeah, have still you do. always yeah. like? Is this what inspired you to get a career in the music industry? Was there ever anything outside of that? Well, there was things outside of that. It was, I mean, I, I, uni, I studied film um, and filmmaking, and that was sort of the plan. Um, but I think by the nature of my family and, and what they did, music was always at the fore. Um, mm. my, my parents played. We used to go to their shows on weekends and uh, you know music festivals and all the rest of it they were associated with. And yeah. once you see it and feel it and know what power it has, it, it does put its little claws into your soul. And it's, it's hard to get away from once you've felt it and know what what can be done with music. So yeah. um, I still have this, this secret dream of getting back into filmmaking. But, uh, yeah, I think just by the nature of, of the path, I think music has, has been kind to me and, and it has been a lot of fun. Currently, you guys are recording your fourth album. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, did you have a <laughs> Thank clear, you. <laughs> I can't wait to hear it. Can you, did you guys have like this clear idea of where this album was heading when you first started recording? Hell no. We never do. <laughs> um, That's the best way to do it. Yeah, totally. I mean, we, we, yeah, we've, we've never ever had an idea of what we're trying to do. We, we've written some blueprints, and I think probably the most blueprinted album was probably Sound Awake. That that had some really heavy thought going into the process of mm. what we're trying to make, um, and some very early planning. But I mean, in saying that, a lot of that, a lot of the planning just, you know, after spending hours and hours on planning, it just fell apart. Then so you just tend to move with the areas that are that are working and you're running with. And I think that's why, from that point forward, a lot of the planning stopped, and we just wrote, 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 um, you know, I think we're the kind of band that <clears throat> runs on uh, the feel and the, and the energy and the vibe and all that, all that rubbish, but <laughs> it's more about what you're, what you're trying to create than sitting down saying, right, we need this, you know, it's it just, we have pieces and we have such a strange convoluted way of writing music, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's painful, very painful, but it does, cre- it does create results, you know, so. Um, that's uh, sort of the way we've always done it. I think the way we'll always do it. So, so this songwriting process is there? Do you feel there's certain topics you need to address being a metal band? Like, where, where, how does that come about? Um, we, well, we, we don't really class ourselves as a metal band. I mean, we, progressive rock, we're, we're happy with that that moniker, and that's that's sat on our shoulders for a long time, and we get that. I mean, if you listen to the last couple of albums, there's really not a lot on there that's metal. Um, there's certainly a heavy aspect to it and we yeah. love that heavy aspect because that's what, what drives us um, and gives it the power we feel that the music needs behind it um, but you know I think from from the metal perspective or, or, or the heavy perspective it's always it's just just make what we feel is necessary to make um, you know and whatever comes out is whatever comes out I think So will this be released on vinyl? Yeah I think so mate we've got all the others on vinyl so <clears throat> we've got to complete the package also, yeah, can't wait to get it. I was like, I really a, hoping this one will be. Space on my uh, on my vinyl shelf for one more vinyl, so I reckon I could probably squeeze one more in there. I know. I went to the vinyl shop the other day, and I think I spent three hundred dollars. It's just so good. Um, oh, nice. This, the music you guys like, whatever you release, it builds a connection with your fans. Why do you think yeah. you guys have such a strong connection with your fans? And they like follow you through everything. Why do you think this one is? Um, I think it's to do with the style of music we play. Progressive music by its nature, and even heavy music in general, has always created that kind of niche following of people that are in it for more than just the music. You know, they they feel a connection to it and they want to know more about it. And there's a certain mystique about some of the styles of music that we do, I think, too, that, that really <clears throat> convolute people and, and allow people to appreciate uh, something more than just a, a piece of music. I think that's what binds these people together. It's almost a little community in itself, the way these people listen to music and operate when they come to shows. Um, and that's always worked in our favour, thankfully. It's amazing that we can write, you know, one album every four years. It's, there's not many bands that can do that and get away with that. Um, so it's um, it, it's humbling and it's an amazing thing that, that we have these types of fans. Um, and I think it's, yeah, it's partly because of the music. It's, it's a fairly deep 
kind of music. It's not sort of throwaway stuff. You can listen mm. to it every time you listen to it. Hopefully you can hear something you haven't heard before. It's It's got longevity, and I think that goes hand in hand with the types of people that uh, that appreciate this kind of stuff. Speaking of shows, exciting news. In November, you're on the road supporting Deftones. Can you, is this the first time you've supported a band in Australia for more than a decade? Like, I'm <laughs> yeah. pretty excited. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit excited. It's yeah, it's, we've said no to so many internationals. It's it's like it's strange. Everyone's sort of like, oh, congratulations, you've got the Deftones tour, and we're sort of like, well, yeah, it's not the first band that's offered us a tour. <laughs> you know? But in saying that, it is. It's, it's, it's amazing because I mean, they're you know, it's, they're one of those bands that you just can't say no to. They're they're uh, they were a big influence on us when we were young. We've done shows with them, you know, in America and in, uh, in Moscow of all places. So you know, we we, we know the guys. It's uh it's great to be able to do shows with them again, and it's just worked out at a time where we can. So, it's uh, yeah, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. You're playing in Sevy Theatre in South Australia. That's going to be insane. I can't wait. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> at, at the gigs, right, I'm always, you know, one of those in the pit, like, having a great time. Any mm-hmm. really weird things you've seen happen in the mosh? Because I'm sure you get them. <laughs> <laughs> you do see some weird things. Uh Generally, you see some great things of people supporting each other and catching everybody, but sometimes... Uh, that fails. Uh, <laughs> one tour of Europe, uh, there was one guy that, that jumped up and did the big hero thing where he put his hands in the air and he looked at us and pointed at all of us and then pointed at the crowd and then sort of did the big come together, come and catch me, catch me thing. And everyone sort of cheered him and he thought, oh, that's a good sign. That means everyone's going to catch me and proceeded to uh, uh, Jesus Christ arms out into the crowd. <laughs> and everybody just separated. And this guy, oh, the, no. the, thud, the thud of this oh. guy hitting the floor was... Uh, it was louder than our guitars, which were pretty loud, I gotta say. So, uh, yeah, that was that was a little intense. He was okay. He was okay after a, a got him back and uh, patched up his wounds, but <laughs> he was all smiles by the end of it. But yeah, it was just it was one of those. Oh, you know, everyone sort of sucks in a breath. Like a, oh, what the hell? Was yeah. Um, Stop yeah, playing for a bit. Was, <laughs> yeah, there was a, a couple of people stopped playing. Thankfully, I think. Thankfully, Steve, the uh, drummer kept the book, kept it all moving. But uh, yeah, that was in, that was entertaining. Always else. trust the drummer. Um, so Always trust the drummer. Change is that your favourite song to play? Ah, oh, changes all the time. Funnily enough, hence the word. Mm-hmm. But no, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> up there for sure. It's a really yeah. fun one to play live. Um, that's uh, it's, it's a long, it's 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 an interesting song. It, it uh, allows for a bit of movement. You know, I think a lot of our music is very just play it as it is, you know, but some of the songs we get that little bit of freedom to not so much ad lib but just colorize the music and I think <clears throat> change is one of them which is uh, which is definitely a, a very fun song to play live but they, my favorite song live to play always changes it just depends on the mood and the feel and the and the yeah. tour I think yeah, yeah so can you just explain to me the feeling you're on stage everyone you know has their hands in the air maybe jump into the Jesus Christ thing backwards and failing but <laughs> just what's this feeling when everyone's screaming the lyrics back at you uh, surprise, generally. <laughs> surprise that they actually know them. Um, yeah. <clears throat> we've had that in a few uh, international tours of just being in weird places and having people singing and we're going, God, I'm surprised you even know who we are, let alone know our lyrics. So, yeah, it is. It's amazing. I don't know. People definitely feel an affinity with the music and and and, and, the, and the lyrics, I guess, and it's uh, it's humbling. It just sort of it almost separates you from the stage when that starts to happen. Well, it does mm. for me anyway. It makes you feel like... You know, you don't even need to be there, which is awesome, really awesome, because it, it isn't about the performers, it is about the music. So um, that's a, that is an amazing feeling when you sort of suddenly feel like you're invisible and you could just be in their lounge room and they could just be playing anyone's music and singing along. That's a that's a nice feeling. That, that's really nice of the fan to know that you guys notice us and you love us. <laughs> we make you feel special too. Um, oh, totally, so absolutely. In November, for people listening, can you just plug your gig, tell them what can they expect? Why should they get down at Debbie Theatre? Uh, come, come, come. It's going to be an amazing night. I mean, A, A, you get to see the Deftones. My God. One of the greatest live bands that uh, has or ever will be. Um, and B, it's uh, you get the added extra of seeing a little Australian band called Carnival. We're, we're, we're okay. We're all right. Check us out. Have a listen. Yeah. You might Just like okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, oh look, it'll be energy, it'll be fun. We 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 do still pride ourselves on our live shows, so it's always fun. It's always great fun. That's our chance to let our hair down and, and enjoy our music as well, you know. So uh yeah, really looking forward to it. Yeah, well I, I can't wait to see you. Thanks so much, Hoss, for chatting to me. My pleasure, Hannah. Thank you. Uh, have a good one. See you later. See you, mate.